Hi, welcome to another video. So, if you remember just a couple of years back, the idea of Intel releasing a GPU that could actually shake up the workstation AI and pro graphics market would have sounded pretty wild. I mean, Intel's been making steady progress with their Arc lineup, but nobody really expected them to come out swinging with something that's arguably the best value for money AI-capable GPU right now. But here we are. Intel just launched the Arc Pro B50, and honestly, it's kind of awesome. Let's set the stage a bit. But before proceeding, let me tell you about Ninja Chat. Ninja Chat is an all-in-one AI platform where, for just $11 per month, you get access to top AI models like GPT-40, Claude 4 Sonnet, and Gemini 2.5 Pro. All in one place. I've been using Gemini for quick research. But what's really cool is their AI playground, where you can compare responses from different models side by side. Their mind map generator is a game changer for organizing complex ideas as well. The basic plan gives you 1,000 messages, 30 images, and 5 videos monthly, with higher tiers available if you need more. Use my code KING25 for 25% off any plan or KING40 yearly for 40% off annual subscriptions. Check the link in description to try it yourself. now. Back to the video. The Arc Pro B50 is Intel's latest workstation GPU, and it's clearly aimed at pros, creators, and home labbers who need serious compute power but don't want to pay NVIDIA's premium. It's positioned directly against cards like the NVIDIA RTX A1000, which is a solid little pro card but costs more and only gives you 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Intel, though, has done something here that's both surprising and really, really useful for AI tinkerers and anyone running virtualized workloads. First up, the price, $349. That's not a typo. For a brand new, low-profile, dual-slot workstation GPU, that's just bonkers. And unlike a lot of budget workstation cards, you're not getting shortchanged on memory. The B50 packs a full 16 gigabytes of GDDR6, running at 14 gigabits per second on a 128-bit bus, which gives you 224 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. Now, sure, that's not blowing the doors off in terms of raw bandwidth, but for this segment and price, it's honestly kind of insane. Most cards in this range are either stuck at 8 gigabytes, or, if you want more, you're looking at double or triple the price. But what really sets the B50 apart is the power efficiency. This thing sips power, 70 watts total board power, and it doesn't even need a separate PCI power connector. You just slot it in, and you're good to go. That means it's perfect for small form factor builds, rack mount servers, or any situation where you want to pack multiple GPUs into a tight space. It's basically a dream for anyone building a dense AI cluster or a compact workstation. Now, let's talk about something that's flying under the radar, but could be a game changer. Intel's Project Battle Matrix. Basically, what it does is lay the groundwork for clustering and multi-GPU support with features like SRIOV, that's Single Root I.O. Virtualization, for you, virtualization fans coming soon. The idea is that you'll be able to carve up a single card into multiple virtual GPUs and pass them through to different VMS. That's something NVIDIA only offers on much more expensive cards, and even then, you're dealing with licensing headaches. Here, Intel's bringing that to a $350 card, which is kind of cool. Right now, the feature is in the works and expected to land in the next quarter or so. But even as a standalone card, the B50 is already super compelling. Performance-wise, you're looking at 16 XC2 cores, 128 XMX engines, and support for all the latest standards, DirectX 12 Ultimate, Vulkan, OpenCL, and of course, Intel's own XESS upscaling. 
AI workloads? Not a problem. You can comfortably run quantized models up to 14 billion parameters. And for stuff like Llama 3 or DeepSeek, that's plenty. Even more, if you're running smaller 32B quantized models, you can pack a bunch into that 16 gigabyte VRAM. For most AI devs, that's a sweet spot. Enough memory for real work, but not so much that you're paying for overkill. And best of all, it's available right now. You can literally go and pre-order one on Newegg or other retailers, and it's shipping in just a couple of weeks. If you're a bit more patient, or want even more power, keep an eye out for the Arc Pro B60. That's the beefier sibling, with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, more XE cores, and nearly double the bandwidth. It'll cost you closer to $700, but for the extra memory and performance, that's still a bargain compared to NVIDIA's Pro lineup. But here's where it gets really wild. Third-party partners like Maxon are taking things to the next level. They've got a dual GPU B60 card coming, the Dual 48G Turbo, which is literally two B60 chips on a single PCB for a total of 48 GB of VRAM. The price? Around $1,200. That means, for less than the price of a single RTX 5090, you could theoretically run two of these cards and have 96 gigabytes of VRAM in one system. Sure, the raw compute isn't going to beat NVIDIA's flagship, but if your workloads are memory-bound, think massive LLMs, multi-user VMs, or huge datasets, this is an insanely good deal. The Maxon Dual Card also brings a serious bandwidth boost. Each GPU has a 192-bit bus and 456 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, so you're getting both capacity and speed. Power draw is higher, obviously, at around 400 watts for the whole card. But considering you're basically getting two B60s in one, that's actually pretty reasonable. And again, this is all slot-powered, so you're not dealing with crazy power connectors or server modifications. Back to the B50 for a second. This card is also super flexible. It's got four mini DisplayPort 2.1 outputs, so you can drive up to four 8K displays at once, which is kinda overkill, but still neat for anyone doing multi-monitor setups or digital signage. And because it's a pro card, you get all the ISV certifications and robust drivers that you'd expect for things like CAD, DCC, and engineering apps. It's not just for AI, this is a legit workstation card. Now. It's not all perfect. The 128-bit bus does limit memory bandwidth compared to higher-end cards, and if you're doing heavy-duty 3D rendering or gaming, you'll hit that ceiling before you run out of VRAM. Also, while the open-source Linux drivers are much better now, there's still some work to do. Features like SRIOV are coming soon, but aren't quite here yet. And, yeah... If you need CUD for your workflow, NVIDIA is still king there. But honestly, for $349, it's hard to find anything to complain about. You're getting a proper Pro GPU with 16 gigabytes VRAM, solid AI and compute performance, and a form factor and power profile that just makes sense for so many builds. I mean, I really liked it and have been using it, that's why I thought to share it with you guys as well. Please subscribe to the channel and share your thoughts as well. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!